Hey everybody, I want to give you a kind of a brief introduction to Thinkorswim Web today. Just an overview. And uh, you know, one of the great things about Thinkorswim Web, you don't need any special software downloads. You can just, uh, you just need a computer and an internet connection and you can get off and going. In fact, uh, we're going to get into some of the specifics of it in just a bit, but let me just first remind everybody, we'll look at individual symbols today, but there's no uh, recommendations here. It's just uh, examples we'll be looking at. And options do carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. And Schwab doesn't recommend the use of technical analysis as a sole means of investment research. Paper money is for educational purposes only, and all investing involves risk, including a loss of principal. And past performance is no guarantee of future results. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to the Schwab Dot com site just to show you where you can access Thinkorswim uh, web. One way is just go to www.thinkorswim.com and you can get to it from there. The other way is through schwab.com. You can go up to the trade tab right up there and just click on Thinkorswim web and uh, it will load it up into a browser there. And uh, voila, you have Thinkorswim web. One of the nice features of Thinkorswim Web is that you can toggle between paper money or live trading right on the platform. You can't do that on the software, uh, Thinkorswim software. So just as easy as clicking from one to the other. That's a nice thing on that. Now, another thing is it's divided into sections. So let's kind of talk about the overall formatting of this. We've got these kind of three main sections, left, middle, and right section representing kind of your account summary watch list area on the left, uh, the details of the individual stock, including its chart, fi financial information here in the middle, and on the right, your position statement, essentially. Those are the three sections. And as you're viewing them, you may want to minimize or, or maximize parts of them. And you can do that with this little arrow right there. If I want to get rid of the left-hand column, I just click on this and the left-hand arrow, left-hand column will go away, okay? And similarly on the right side of the page, I can do that to just kind of focus on the areas that you want to on here. Now, in terms of these areas, I mentioned what's there and you can scroll down, especially that middle section, like if you want a chart of a particular stock, and we just have an example stock forward here coming up, but if I want a chart of that, you can see that kind of, it's smaller down there, but uh, it's down there. But that's where uh, these the left-hand column comes in. Because in the left-hand column, if you go to the far left-hand navigation menu, you can look at various <coughs> areas that are more important, so it'll focus in on those areas. So positions, if I click on positions on the left, look what happens to the positions area. Instead of that just right third, it actually brings up most of the screen on positions. If I click on trade, it'll go back to kind of the setting I had when we started. And if I click on charts, remember we could access the charts here below before, but if I wanna really see the charts, click on charts there and it gives you a big chart there on uh, on in the middle panel, panel that you can do your technical analysis on if you'd like. And if you want to look at scans, you can click on scans. And uh, in fact, let me just give you a quick preview of scans here. And like if I'm looking at a scan and I want to find particular stocks that meet some parameters, well, you go to scans, you can look at your scans, you can either go to save scans, maybe you have some up there, but if you're starting out fresh, click on add a filter, and then you can see what you want there. Maybe I want to add in a PE ratio on that. Notice PE ratio is now added in, and you can add other filters on there. So, for example, if I wanted a stock with a PE between, I don't know, 12 and 15, I can add those parameters right in there, click on scan, it's gonna think and it's gonna give me stocks that meet the scan parameters there. And of course you can make your scans a lot more robust than that by clicking on add filter and doing more on that. But that's a, that's a quick way to do it. And then once you've done that and saved it to your satisfaction, click on save query, it'll ask you to name the scan and then in the future you can go to save scans 
and see it right there. Now, let's say we find a stock we're looking at and we want to bring up a stock. Let me go back to the trade tab here for just a sec. And I want to look at a different stock. Well, you can, a couple ways to do it. One, you can click on enter the symbol right at the top of the page. Another is you can click on a symbol either in the left or right hand column. If I want to click on Colgate Palmolive, I just click on it, the symbol there, and it loads it up in the center of the page. Similar, similarly, if I want to click on something on the right side of the page, like AVGO Broadcom, I click on that, it brings it up right there on this page right there. Okay, and so now that I have that and I want to analyze it, I can see the fundamental data up here. You can click on different tabs up here to get different bits of information concerning that stock. Or, as I mentioned previously, we can look at the chart on it. And, you know, if you want to add a study to it, you can add studies to the chart, like a moving average or something like that. Click on studies. And uh, if I want to add a moving average, I just click on the moving average there. I'm not going to go into more depth on that right now, just because this is just a brief overview. But um, that's how you can add studies on. And you can see the studies in various categories here, by the way, as you, as you click on those. And anything with the green plus, you can just add it to your chart there if you like. But let's say we find the stock here and we say, well, I want to buy this stock. Of course, this is just an example. What I can do, though, is I can just click on the green buy button. And that when I do that, it brings up an order down here. And the default is... 100 shares, I can, I can change that if I want, and I can you know, make it a market or limit, and I can go ahead and before you send the order, you got to review it. You click on review in the bottom right portion of that window, and then if it's to your satisfaction, make sure you read it over, be careful with that, then you can send that order. If you have an existing stock, such as I have with AVGO, and I want to close out of it, of course, I can click on that sell button there, or uh, I can see down here, it shows the trades I have. I have, I currently have 100 shares in this paper money account of AVGO, and I can just click on close selected, and it's going to bring up the order to get out of my existing shares there on that. So... Uh, I'm not going to place that trade here right now on that. I'm just going to delete out of that. But if I did want to place the trade, remember, you just click on review there. There's a lot more to do the, to, to this uh, platform. I encourage you to play around with Thinkorswim Web. See if it fits your needs. It's not, it doesn't have all the capabilities of the Thinkorswim desktop software, but it can be convenient to access from your computer, like I said, you just need that internet connection. And we have other videos out there to help you navigate other portions of Thinkorswim Web as well. So uh, everybody, have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me.